Hello and welcome to Olivet United Methodist Church on this Trinity Sunday. My name is Sybil Perrell. I'm the pastor here and at Forestville Church in Lylesville, North Carolina. I hope you'll stay with me for the next 20 minutes or so as we continue the theme from last week. My sermon then was, We Are One. And today that sentence continues as we talk about the Trinity being one, but very different. Let us open with a word of prayer. Holy three in one, we come to look at the mystery of a triune God, three entities distinct unto themselves, but still one. Help us to unite in that way and be one with each other as you are one. Amen. Our scripture today tells us of the beginning of all things, the creation story. From Genesis 1 through chapter 2, verse 3. Read along with me now as I read from the New International Version. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was complete chaos and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swam and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humans in our image 
according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humans in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished in all their multitude, on the sixth day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. May God add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of the scriptures this day. Today is Trinity Sunday, and most of the time I give some analogy of what the Trinity is. You know, how to explain the three-in-one. I've used ice turning to water and then steam as a comparison, but that's not really right. I've used the idea of a woman. She is a wife, a mother, and daughter all in one. But that's not really right either. So I'm going to just stick with the idea that it is a great mystery that we do not and will not ever understand fully until we see God face to face. And then we'll probably say, well, of course, how else could it be? But if you think about it for a little bit here, you can see all the three persons of the Trinity in this scripture. God, the creator, is there in the first verse. No surprise there, he's mentioned several times. The wind, or breath of God, hovers over the waters of chaos. So there's the Holy Spirit. And God speaks the word, and creation begins and continues. In the Gospel of John, John calls Jesus the word made flesh. So there is the Trinity in the very beginning of all things. Notice that they are all different, with different duties to perform according to their function. This idea of diversity continues throughout all of the creation story. The Bible doesn't list all the different species of, of fish and birds, for instance. It simply says, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea creatures and, and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swam and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. And this holds true for all of God's creating. There are swarms of creatures, all different, all with a different distinct function, all with the capacity to reproduce, to fill the earth. All creatures were created to fulfill their own purposes, just as the triune God fulfills their purposes. And then we get to humans in that last day of creation. Then God said, let us make humans in our image, according to our likeness. Notice that our image. God purposely made each of us different. Male and female, all different shapes and sizes, all variations of color and all the distinct personalities and functions. 
We look at our families and we see all different heights and eye and hair color and skin tone. We're all different, but we can trace our lineage together. We are still one family, even though we are different. I'm fair haired and skinned. Uh, I was pale blonde when I was born, and I'm kind of going back to that as I gray. Uh, but I burn if I'm out in the sun for more than 20 or 30 minutes. My oldest brother's hair was dark, almost black, at a very early age. And he could work outside all day long and not get burnt. My middle brother and I were the eggheads in the family. We loved reading and going to school. My mother called me a professional student because I always seemed to be taking a class on something. My oldest and youngest brothers, there were just the four of us, were the athletes. They ran track and played football. They didn't care for school that much and learned their professions by apprenticing with uh, under someone instead of going to classes. They were also the ones, and still are, my youngest brother still living. They're also the ones who never met a stranger. They were outgoing and seemed to know everyone, not just in our county, but in the ones adjacent to it as well. My middle brother and I were quieter and were the wallflowers pretty much at parties and things when we'd get up the nerve to go. But we were all raised by the same parents and, and we went to the same church. So why so different from each other? Look at your own families and I think that you'll find the very same thing. Because God made us in their image and God continues to make us different from each other. Not just outer appearances either, we act differently. Even identical twins have differences. One is more outgoing than the other. Animals are that way too. Some dogs and cats really like being around humans and cuddle up with you. While others in the same litter will be more standoffish and independent. God made everything to have a function. And not just that certain species would do certain things, but even within the species, there would be differences in function and personality. So some people are good with people. Others are good with tools. Some are very creative. Some not so much. Some are just made to be teachers or doctors or carpenters or electricians. We say they have a calling we each have our strengths and our weaknesses because God made us so that we would depend on each other to live in community as God lives in community as the Trinity. It takes us all to do what God gave us as our purpose, to care for all the creatures of the earth and the planet as a whole. That direction was given to us at the time humans were placed on earth and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. This is our purpose as the human race, to care for the creation as a whole because we are created in the image of God. We are to care for God's creation as God cares for it. And that's a whole nother sermon about ecology and taking care of the planet and stewardship. We're not going to go there today. And as we care for the earth and its creatures, we cannot forget that people are God's creatures too. We are to care for each other as God has cared for us all. With all our differences of opinion and personality, size and shape, color and language, we are still all God's creatures. And if we are to take care of the earth, we also have to take care of each other, doing what is good and right for each other. 
Because as they, the Trinity, are one, we also are one. And if we are one, united in our purpose to care for the earth and all that is in it, then we will care for each other. Because even with our differences, each of us has our own function, our own calling, our own task to complete here on earth in the time that we have. If one is missing due to violence or hunger or illness, our ability to work as a unit is decreased. The church is decreased in this very same way. When some are missing, we may not be able to complete our function, our task that God has set before us as a church. It is important for us to be together in community, for the church has become part of that creation story now. Jesus spoke to this and commanded us to love one another and go and make disciples. This is the task of the individuals who are the church. Each of us is different, with different strengths and weaknesses, but together we can be one as they are one. We can accomplish much together as the church universal. Will you work to fulfill your function as God's creature and as a child of God? Will you strive to be one with all humans no matter what? We can only be one with God when we are one with each other, patterning our lives by theirs. Unite to care for the planet and for each other so that God may be glorified. Let us pray. Holy Trinity, we are so thankful that you are made in such a way that we are made in your image. Diverse, distinct, with our strengths and our weaknesses. You make us so we would depend on each other as you depend on each other. We're thankful for those who are graduating. Please guide them, Spirit, on the next part of their journey. Help them to find their uniqueness without losing their connections with others. We thank you for safe travel and that Jacob is slowly getting his strength back. We ask your continued healing for him and for Louise, for Keith and Jack. And we ask you especially to be with Todd's family as they grieve the loss of his father. Bind them together in your love as they comfort each other. We marvel at the mystery that is you, Holy One. We can't put you in a box and say, this is you, for you are too big to be put into a category. Help us to simply accept your presence in our lives and live as you would have us to live, united in love with each other as you are united. All these things we ask in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our hymn today is the first verse of number 62 in the United Methodist Hymnal, All Creatures of Our God and King. By Words are by Francis of Assisi, of all people, and were translated by William Draper. And the music is a German tune that I won't try to pronounce. Let's sing together. Everybody seems to know this song. All creatures of our God and King, Lift up your voice and with us sing. Oh, praise ye, alleluia. Oh, brother sun with golden beam. Oh, sister moon with silver gleam. Oh, praise ye, oh, praise ye. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Our announcements today are as follows. Bible study this evening at 5.30 and tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Hopefully we'll be in the backyard, but we'll wait and see there at the parsonage. We are completing our study of the book of Romans this week, looking at chapters 15 and 16. Come join us. And our next one will be 
Philippians. We'll be looking at, the, at his letter to the Philippians beginning next week. Olivet's mission for June is vegetable oil or shortening and extra canned vegetables for the Anson Crisis Ministry as they are running short on food and seeing about 98, 100 people each day. Uh, and that's a lot. So please, uh, if you can, contribute to that. Forestville's June mission is, also, is the food drive for Anson Crisis Ministry. And their council meeting minutes are on the Narthex table. If you would like a copy of those, please let me know. Olivet's council meeting uh, is tomorrow, June the 5th at 6.30. And Vacation Bible School setup will be right after the council meeting. Vacation Bible School will be at, on June the 10th from 9.30 till about 12, 11.30 uh, at Olivet. According to how long the, the kids can hold out and how long we can hold out, probably. Thank you for your thoughts and ideas on a sermon series. I think I've kind of sort of decided and we'll wait and see if you recognize what it is when we get to it. If you have comments to make, you can do that right where you are uh, on Olivet's Facebook page or on YouTube. Uh, and just uh, give us a like, a thumbs up, a thumbs down, uh, or write a comment in, type a comment in. If you would like to talk with me, you can do that by calling or texting 704-640-6872. Uh, if you would like to send a contribution to either church for our missions, or if you just would like to put your, uh, your thoughts in a letter and send it to us, uh, you can do that by uh, writing to P.O. Box 452, Lylesville, North Carolina, 28091. Thanks so much. And do, if you want to send a check for one of the missions, write it out to either one church or the other, Olivet or Forestville, UMC. Now receive this blessing. Leave this place marveling at all of our differences and our strengths and our weaknesses, remembering that we are all created in God's image. Honor that and love all people that you meet. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless.